In this video, I will give a very brief overview of uh, different types of PV inverters or PV system configurations. Here I am going to focus only on the presently more widely used configurations while a later video will focus on some of the newer uh, and emerging uh, configuration types. First, let's look at the different uh, classifications of PV inverters. Based on whether they are connected to the grid uh, or not, so you have uh, a grid connected inverters or standalone inverters. And uh, as you would expect, majority of the PV inverters at present, they are grid connected. Um, and uh, those which are standalone, you can have uh, another two types based on whether they support DC loads or AC loads. And uh, they can also be classified based on whether they are single phase inverters or three phase inverters with uh, the low power PV inverters less than about 10 kilowatt being single phase and uh, the higher power commercial and utility scale inverters being three phase inverters. Okay, then you can uh, have a classification based on whether the inverters have uh, galvanic isolation using transformers uh, or transformerless topologies. So among those which have transformer, you could either have a line frequency, which is 50 hertz or 60 hertz transformer. Uh, most of the high power utility scale inverters, they invariably employ line frequency transformers in order to step up the uh, relatively low voltages like uh, 400 to 600 volts RMS line to line voltage that the inverters produce. They are stepped up to the uh, distribution level or the sub transmission level much higher voltages using these line frequency transformers which also provide isolation. The uh, string inverters at much lower power level, they um, they employ high frequency transformers uh, most uh, most often in the DC to DC conversion conversion stage of the of the PV inverter. The transformer list topologies those are uh, more of a recent phenomenon, and they become popular uh, as the um, some of the restrictions on PV array grounding are being relaxed in the emerging. Um, uh, grid connection, grid interconnection standards and codes. Okay, finally, based on the uh, uh, type of PV array configuration, the number of inverters used and the type of grid connection, we can have uh, three more types of uh, inverters. So those are the central string and micro inverters. The central inverter is a single large inverter for an entire array of series parallel connected PV panels. The string inverter is uh, uh, is one inverter per series connected string used mostly in residential applications. And finally the micro inverter is uh, having one inverter per panel uh, and connected directly to the AC grid. So we will be looking at each of these three types in, uh, in detail in this video. First let's look at some of the standalone PV inverters, uh, in this case supporting a DC load. Uh, some of the applications could be mobile applications where um, a lot of electronic devices can be supported or it could be street lamps or signposts or telephones uh, or at a slightly higher power level water pumping using DC motors. The uh, system configuration for a standalone DC load uh, supporting PV inverter would look something like this. Now since the um, solar energy is intermittent and since in a standalone system, the solar energy is the only source of power, uh, since there is no grid, we would es essentially need uh, a storage element, a battery, in order to continue to support the load when there is no sun. So we have a charge controller which charges the battery from the PV panels and uh, we also need a DC-DC converter that regulates uh, the voltage uh, at the battery which can be um, slightly varying uh, in order to convert that into a precisely regulated DC voltage as required by the loads we have this DC DC converter and it is also possible that we may have multiple DC outputs to support multiple uh, DC loads requiring different levels of voltages. Okay, then we have the standalone PV, PV inverters supporting the more common AC loads. The applications could be any off-grid load. For example, in remote places, uh, it may be more economical 
to uh, support the entire load through um, PV systems rather than trying to extend the power grid to those re remote places. So you, you can envision a complete solar homes where all the AC loads are supported by this inverter. The configuration, uh, once again this being a standalone uh, system, we will need the energy storage, the battery, and therefore a charge control to charge the battery from the PV panels. And uh, this PV DC, the PV or the battery DC voltage is converted to sinusoidal AC voltage um, to support the AC loads. And this is done through this DC to AC inverter and the inverter is responsible for maintaining the voltage magnitude and the frequency uh, within the limits as required by the AC loads. Uh, we can also think of a hybrid system where the load is supported not only by the PV and the battery through this uh, inverter but also through uh, diesel AC generators which is connected in parallel to the output of the, uh, of the inverter. Okay, next we come to the more common type of PV inverters, namely the grid connected PV inverters. And uh, among these, we look at the central inverters first. The uh, central inverters are used invariably in uh, utility scale and uh, large commercial scale applications with the power rating of individual inverter ranging from uh, 250 kilowatts to well above a megawatt. For example, some of the uh, PV systems on the parking lots of uh, our university ASU are rated uh, close to a megawatt and they are supported by uh, four inverters rated at uh, 250 kilowatts. Uh, whereas the larger utility scale plants like the one that I'm going to show in the next slide, uh, they have power ratings um, in the hundreds of megawatt and uh, they are uh, supported by several uh, megawatt or two megawatt inverters. Okay, then let's look at the PV panel configuration. So first we have a multiple of uh, PV panels connected in series so to form uh, what is known as a string. So this would be one string. Okay. A large number of PV panels connected in, in series to produce something like uh, close to a 600 volts uh, DC. Okay. And several such strings uh, are connected in parallel to form the complete PV PV array. Okay. So this is uh, several PV um, strings connected to form an array and for this entire PV array which has multiple strings in parallel we have just one inverter and that is the central inverter that converts the roughly 600 volts DC depending on the solar conditions this will vary over a wide range uh, converts that into a three-phase AC roughly 480 volts uh, uh, RMS line to line and this is convert this is stepped up to uh, to the distribution or the sub transmission level voltage is probably around 12 kV for this distribution or maybe 69 kV and above for a sub transmission level interface okay this is an example of a large uh, utility scale PV power plant um, in uh, in Yuma County Arizona not too far from ASU so this is the Agua Caliente solar project and um, spread over 2400 acres. Uh, when it is completed, it will be generating a peak power of 290 megawatts. Now these panels are arranged in uh, multiple arrays of uh, 1.25 megawatts AC each and uh, each of these uh, sub-arrays of 1.25 megawatts, they are um, they are supported by two uh, central inverters. And you can clearly see these uh, inverters in this uh, PV, PV arrays. Some of the main advantages of uh, central inverter systems are that, uh, first of all, they are very, uh, they are highly efficient. So if you look at the data sheets of some of the main central inverter manufacturers, you will see that the efficiencies are uh, above 97, 98% in that range. Um, probably the biggest advantage is that they are highly cost effective or at least among the, uh, the uh, different types of inverter systems, the central inverter is probably the most cost effective, especially for large utility scale and uh, co larger commercial scale applications. Uh, some of the drawbacks are listed here. Uh, probably the main drawback is that since there is only one inverter 
for a very large PV array, there is only one maximum power point tracking or MPPT control. So therefore, if there is a say a partial shading in only a few of the panels, uh, then the all the panels of that string are are completely affected, and even the other strings in the same array also uh, operate at less than their optimal power rating. Therefore, um, there is a disproportionate reduction in the energy yield for partial shading of just a few panels or a few cells, um, and not only partial shading. Uh, because of the very large array, it's possible that the different panels have fairly significant mismatch in their uh, in their characteristics, which will again uh, more than disproportionately affect the overall energy yield of the of the entire system. And also, this being a single inverter, if this inverter happens to fail, then the entire PV plant, or at least that power corresponding to that sub array, is completely lost. Uh, so, so those are some of the major drawbacks. But in spite of these drawbacks, the central inverters are the most popular type for the larger uh, utility scale uh, PV power plants. Okay, the next type we'll see is the string inverter systems, and uh, these are usually used in uh, residential applications with the power rating ranging from two kilowatt to um, about six kilowatt. Now the, they tend to be usually single phase uh, systems. Um, so the configuration is shown here. So you have a series connected um, PV panels again forming um, DC voltage roughly in the range of um, about 300 to 500 uh, volts DC. And they are converted to um, grid quality AC through this, uh, through this string inverter. Now, it's also possible to have, uh, especially at higher power levels, to have multiple PV strings, uh, each connected to an individual inverter, uh, as shown uh, shown here. So you have uh, three strings, uh, each producing about uh, you know close to 400, 500 volts DC, uh, converted to AC uh, through an individual inverter. Um, so. So especially when you have uh, different orientations of the PV panels, like uh, some of them are east facing, some west facing, then it is advantageous to have uh, more than one inverter, even for the residential application, to capture more um, more power from the sun. The string level uh, uh, string inverters have uh, better uh, MPPD performance than a central inverters in that um, they have at least one MPPD per string. Uh, as in this configuration, instead of having just uh, uh, one inverter or one MPPD for the entire array. So in that sense, it's better than central, but it's still not optimal. For example, when you look at micro inverters, we'll see that uh, it does uh, a better MPPD performance than the string level um, inverter. And some of the newer string inverters, they also support with the same, with a single inverter, they have multiple DC-DC converters inside the inverter. And each each DC DC converter can support one string, providing an independent MPPD control for that inver for that uh, PV string. So in that sense, it it performs better than uh, an inverter that accepts only one uh, one PV input. Okay, most of the string inverters uh, at present, uh, at least in the US, uh, most of them have a transformer isolation. Some of the older designs achieve this isolation using 60 Hz transformer, whereas the newer designs uh, use a high frequency transformer in the DC DC stage. Now, most uh, utilities, uh, or at least many utilities uh, in the US, still require that the uh, inverters have uh, a transformer isolation. And earlier, the NEC code required that um, the um, the PV arrays be be grounded uh, at uh, either at the positive or the negative terminal, and if we have this requirement, then uh, the design uh, necessarily should have uh, a transformer isolation. There's no other way to interface a grounded array to to the grid, which is also grounded at the neutral. Now, the uh, some of the newer uh, the the latest NEC codes, they have uh, they do not uh, any further require that the PV uh, array be grounded. So therefore, it is now possible to um, to directly interface the uh, PV through the inverter, which has no transformer or, uh, or isolation, directly to the grid. 
so some of the um, the newer inverters are becoming transformerless uh, even in the US and uh, some of the biggest advantage um, uh, are that uh, first of all they are uh, less expensive because the transformer can be uh, a significant part of the inverter cost uh, and also the size of the uh, the size and, and therefore the weight of the inverter is also significantly reduced as you get rid of this uh, isolation transformer uh, but there are several other uh, restrictions in terms of um, um, ground current sensing and even the topology has to be very different uh, when you go for transformerless topologies so some of the later videos uh, would focus completely on the complete design of string inverters and some of them will also look at topologies specific for transformerless operation okay the last type is this uh, new concept of uh, micro inverters so the basic idea here is that there will be one inverter per each PV panel um, so uh, a PV panel is rated for say anywhere between 200 to uh, maximum of 300 watts so the inverter is also rated for, is also rated for the same as the um, PV panel rating roughly 200 to 250 watts okay. so um, so this inverter um, converts uh, a DC voltage roughly in the range of um, um, say about um, 30 volts that range to 30 volts DC to about uh, 120 volts or uh, 240 volts um, single phase AC there are also micro inverters which are um, um, designed for three phase applications as well okay. but the main concept is having um, the inverter attached at the back of the PV panel itself and uh, directly interfacing to the single phase or the three phase grid without requiring this DC wiring okay. so some of the uh, main advantages of a micro inverter concept uh, the first advantage is that you have independent MPPT maximum power tracking for each of the PV panels so therefore if there is a partial shading or there is a mismatch between the various panels each panel can produce independently the maximum possible power irrespective of what happens with the other other PV panels so that can be a very significant advantage especially when you do expect some of um, the uh, more, some of the panels to be shaded uh, by you know, nearby construction or and so on um, the other advantage of course is uh, you completely eliminate the uh, uh, the high voltage and uh, high current uh, DC DC wiring and DC switches which can be a significant advantage uh, and of course the system is inherently modular and flexible so if you want to increase the power rating of the system uh, let's say it was designed initially for a 3 kilowatt you want to add another 2 kilowatt then it is very easy to do if this is a micro inverter whereas if it's a string inverter it becomes that much more difficult you need to change the uh, the DC configuration whereas here you just keep adding more panels with the inbuilt um, micro inverter some of the disadvantages uh, are the micro inverters uh, tend to be more expensive on a, on a per watt basis compared to uh, string inverters and certainly compared to the central inverters uh, and also the um, the efficiency of micro inverters uh, is um, one two or three percent less than the uh, string inverters uh, at present 